Our next speaker is Cooper Ashley. Cooper is a trial lawyer with Malson, Edelman, Borman, and Brand in Minneapolis. Cooper focuses on product liability and business litigation matters, as well as other class action and tort cases, including medical device, environmental toxic tort, and fire explosion cases. He's first, chairs, he's first chaired numerous jury and bench trials in state and federal courts, argued appeals before the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals on bank, the Minnesota Supreme Court, and the Minnesota Court of Appeals, and has conducted all manner of related fact and expert discovery and motions practice. Cooper will give us tips, uh, give us tips counseling clients, employees to write smart and avoid creating documents from hell that haunt companies in litigation. Please join me in welping, welcoming Cooper Ashley. Good morning. Um, I learned earlier today from Jeff Hines that uh, all of you are goldfish and you have an attention span of nine seconds. I'm hoping at the end of this uh, presentation you'll know not to put that in writing or in an email to somebody so that you can be deposed about it later. Um, it's happened to all of us. It's happened to, um, oh yeah, this deal. Um, it's happened to all of us as, as people preparing to take depositions, as people defending depositions as clients, you're going through the deal, you look at a document, and you get documents from hell that, that haunt you the whole case. Here's some historical ones that are, you've probably seen them. These are old tobacco uh, memos from 1963. For example, we are then in the business of selling nicotine, an addictive drug. Uh, nicotine research is where the action is, but where our attorneys least want us to be. Uh, that kind of stuff is, is not helpful. Um, imagine a five-year-old child who will be a future customer of your cigarettes in the next few years. How can your company begin to attract and tap into this next generation? Um, well, those are things you'd rather not have uh, written. Here's some asbestos examples, uh, uh, 1966 memo. My answer to the problem is, if you have enjoyed a good life while working with asbestos products, why not die from it? There's got to be some good cause for, you know, I mean, really. Uh, references made to your memo of September 15th regarding the warning label that should appear on Kalo, which is a brand of asbestos. Are you saying that we have to do this now? I naturally would like to delay this requirement as long as possible. So most employees don't get it. They, so you have to take them back to the beginning. We've done a bunch of employee training on a writing smart. And you, you take a department and you get them in a room like this and you show them slides like this because they don't understand that when they create something, it lives forever, and then it gets produced in a piece of litigation, and then they get deposed on it. So uh, employees have to understand that whether you manufacture, design, sell, whatever you do, whatever your business is, documents get created. They create, uh, you create documents to communicate with customers, end users, vendors, management team, employees, regulators, everybody. And, and employees, again, don't get that. They make an email, they send it to their boss, and they think that it's going to be inside the company. It'll never be released. Documents include anything that gets created, hard copy, electronic data on hard drives, network drives, handheld drives, drafts, finals, handwritten notes, emails, texts, social media, voicemails, and videos. Those tobacco and asbestos uh, communications were before the day where every one of our employees, your employees, have basically uh, keyboards at their disposal 24-7. Those were back when you had to have typewriters and carbon copies and the rest of it. So we're creating immense piles of documents now. Um, documents are critical to business. Uh, you need it to make decisions. You need it to hire, fire, train employees. You need it to, uh, to sell and uh, purchase things. Uh, and companies have all sorts of, this is a typical uh, medical device company. We'll have an R&D department, a product testing and analysis department, a regulatory department, quality department, manufacturing, marketing, and on and on and on. Employees don't understand that the companies have a uh, big big uh, departments that create a lot of documents and so they're not mindful of that when they create documents and it comes back to uh, to haunt them different kinds of documents again we we start at the beginning and we get the employees in a room and we run them through all of these kinds of slides you should feel free to use our slides to uh, to put together training programs for your people um, there's training materials website content are all rec uh, are all documents quote unquote financial records SEC and other filings press releases, contracts, uh, plans and forecasts. Employees don't understand how documents get out. These are our documents. I created it within my department as a part of my employment. How, how come we're giving these out? 
Uh, well, there's government investigations, there's media requests, there's competitors, parties in litigation not involving the company through a third party subpoena, and opposing counsel wants documents for a whole bunch of reasons because it works. <laughs> if you get a good document from hell in a case, we all know what the impact is. Uh, again, educate your employees on all of the sources of requests for documents so they understand uh, how they get released and how they get produced. Uh, FOIA, media, customers, distributors uh, are all sources of documents going outside the company to places where you don't want them to be. Um, and discovery requests, that's the most common kind that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and why? Because it works. Uh, documents are the means by which your company's story is told and you want to tell it the right way or do you want to have somebody else take a document of yours and tell it in a way that's not so comfortable. Uh, so what is, what is a smart document? I like to just go through rules for employees. A lot of these are overlapping. A lot of these come at uh, the same issue from different directions. So at the end, it's sort of repetitive. You pound it into them. We'll do mock, uh, follow the rules. We'll do mock exams. We'll bring, uh, we'll bring lawyers in with real documents and depose. Um, I'm hitting this by mistake. Um, we'll depose people in front of a group of employees and cross-examine them on, that, on a document. And it's very, very effective. So the first rule. Um, should this communication be better, better handled in person or on the phone? You know, a lot of people use email these days because they don't want to have an unpleasant, uh, uh, horrible conversation with the guy next door. So they email. And that's when you start to get in trouble. Sometimes it's better just to pick up the phone or walk down the hall. Would you be concerned if this email that you're about to send gets out? Uh, it's the New York Times rule, you know, if it's on the front page of the paper, are you going to like that or not? Um, so. All of these emails that I'm about to show you, um, the reason I don't have any hair is that most of them are in depositions that I've had to deal with, all right? So um, you can't make this stuff up. The names of the innocent have been removed to protect their identity, but uh, most of these people were more guilty than innocent. Um, until the reps are not compensated and incented to sell it to everyone hum humanly possible, including the janitor, problems will continue to increase. This is a sales rep to the sales manager concerned about the way they're training and incenting sales reps in the field. Wrote this email and sent it up the chain. Rule two, identify the correct recipient li list. Jack talked this morning about the bigger your CC list gets, you have an impact on privilege. But the other thing about the big CC list is it identifies more witnesses. If I send an email to one person, we're protect, uh, perhaps two of us will be deposed. If I send it to 15 people, that's potentially 15 depositions. And ask yourself, who should not see what I'm about to say? And if, if there's a bunch of reasons, a bunch of people you don't want to see it, go back to rule number one and pick up the phone and walk down the hall. Um, never assume confidentiality. Again, employees think that if it's in some internal computer, it's never going to see the light of day. We all know that that's just not true. And the little disclaimer at the bottom of your email that says this is being sent on behalf of Cooper Ashley and this law firm, and if you're not an intended recipient, blah, blah, blah. How, how many people have gotten protected by that uh, little fine print to save your day? Not very often. Um, employees don't understand that if they do business on their handheld, it's still relevant and discoverable. You know, so if you're using your personal email account, but at work, it's still discoverable. If it's before or after work, you're off the clock, it's still discoverable. If you're using your own Gmail account, but it's business related, it's still discoverable. And a lot of employees don't understand that. They think if I do this on my phone, then it's mine and nobody can see it. Well, we've all been in that deposition too. Sir, have you uh, ever sent an email to your boss on your phone? Yeah, well, there we go. Um, Rule four, what do they really need to know about? There's a meeting, okay? Tell them there's a meeting. It's a dumb meeting. It's a dumb meeting where there's gonna be hell to pay. It's a dumb meeting I don't wanna go to. Just, you don't have to add that stuff. There's a meeting. Be clear, complete, and concise. Uh, don't use vague or ambiguous or argumentative language. Uh, include the information you need, the context you need. If you can't write everything down in the email, say so. 
There's other factors that uh, you should consider, but among the ones you should consider are this, this, and this. If, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm not giving you a complete list, but I'm giving you a couple of things there's more to talk about. If put, make it full and complete, and if you're not, tell them it's not full and complete. Uh, exclude unnecessary or ir irrelevant information. Um, here's one that was in a, in a case we had. The email said, we will lose customers if we issue another product recall. All right, so how's that interpreted? The plaintiffs would say, oh, well, you're not going to do a recall because you're going to lose market share and sales. You're putting profits ahead of safety. When you talk to the author of the email, she said, that's not what I meant at all. I'm just saying we should, we should focus on manufacturing high-quality products so we can serve our clients better. That's what she meant by it. So this one got explained in the deposition. It was fine, but that's, that's an example of an ambiguous email subject to multiple interpretations. Um, stick to the facts. A lot of people uh, you know, put opinion in as fact. They overstate, they overgeneralize. Things like, this never has happened before, or it always happens. Or, I've never seen it like this. Try and avoid that. Uh, and don't ever render any legal opinions or conclusions. Uh, a lot of employees think they know better. Uh, they think they're amateur lawyers. And they'll, um, they'll render an opinion that, that comes back to haunt you. These are the kind of red flag words that, um, that kill you. In a product liability case, you'll have a return product come in. And an engineer will look at it and say, oh, it's defective. Or, you know, it failed. They should just learn to report what they see. The cord is disattached from the body. You know, this is fractured. It's not a defect. It's not a failure. Just write it down um, accurately as to what's uh, been seen. Intellectual property, you know, you don't want to have people writing in emails, there was an infringement. This is what the patent says. This is what the products do. As opposed to, oh, well, it is clearly infringing. Contract, this is what the contract says. This is what we did. You don't want people saying then, oh, well, we breached the contract. Um, this is just a, this is obvious to us, but um, these are just reminders. You know, these are things that <laughs> you don't want to see in an email. Uh, delete this email. If you write delete this email on an email, <laughs> you're already in the weeds, right? Don't tell somebody about this. Hey, can we get away with this? They'll never find out if we do this. Um, use humor or sarcasm carefully. Now, I see there's no children in the room because I've got a couple of slides I'm about to put up that um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're really so good that I, I just could keep them out. But be careful when you, when you tell a joke because it might not be interpreted correctly and you might offend somebody. Um, and that's particularly true for anything off-color, uh, sexual content or innuendo. This was an exchange. This was supposed to be a joke. This company was putting together a prototype product, and R&D was doing it, and they had a vendor putting together the prototype, and they were going to get the prototype in and show it to some of their customers to work on um, some development issues. So R&D didn't get the, the thing there on time for this meeting. So the product engineer sends out the email. Uh, those of you attending, we weren't able to get the thing in time. So then the product manager says, well, that doesn't surprise me. You guys dropped the ball once again. And uh, the product engineer writes back and says, well, we're just trying to one-up your, your F-ups, right? So this was a joke. And you can imagine how we had to unravel that in the deposition. Oh, it was just a joke. Really, r and D's good. They don't, they don't do really F-ups, you know? OK, fine. Um, all right, now, this, this one breaks all the rules. The, the context here was that this is from a sales rep to his regional manager. And the regional, the sales rep had said to the regional manager, hey, I've got us an audience with, an, with this big client we've been trying to get in front of. We've been trying for two years to get, to get in front of this potential account. I've got it done. It's going to happen. So this is the response. F me in the goat a SS Batman, could this actually work? Okay, so um, he's responding to this, to this new opportunity. He could have said it differently. <laughs> then, he adds, then he adds the phishing report. 
BTW, 130 Northerns, 13 Walters, 36 Perch, lots of booze. Now, the movie log for this that I learned earlier today would be Dumbass Goes Fishing. <laughs> a Walter, for, by the way, in Minnesota means a walleye pike. So, you know, you can imagine the deposition. This was a part of a long email chain about communications between sales reps about a particular product that we had to produce. And when we showed the guy this in the prep, whew, he got a little white. Okay, so now this is another one that, uh, that was a killer. I mean, this, I don't know, this shortened my life. So this is an, in response to an announcement that somebody had been promoted and relocated. All right, so we want to congratulate uh, David Schultz, my partner, for being relocated to uh, Wisconsin, and he's got a new territory, right? So one of the recipients sends back to just a few of his favorite guys. Um, X forgot to add that Y also enjoys smoking pole and dabbling in homoerotic activities with his Republican buddies in the presence of a picture of W. Best of luck making love to the customers in, uh, in the new area. Yep, got produced, got marked as an exhibit. So now that would, those would have fit, fit on any rule violation, but don't use profanity, don't use racial, ethnic, religious, political, uh, gender slurs, and don't send stuff when you're mad. Don't send stuff when you're mad. This is, this is from a really mad person um, who uh, is feeling disrespected uh, by R&D. This was a regulatory employee in a company, a medical device company, and uh, R&D wouldn't do any testing. She thought they, there should be some testing. We are taking the risk that we won't be asked anything by our reg agencies. Don't tell, don't ask, tisk, tisk. Produced, marked, inquired upon. That was a long afternoon. Uh, this is from a person who's trying to get a vendor contract approved and um, couldn't get it done. And there were contract issues later in the case. This was produced. Um, I'm sure that she is swamped, but now after being on both sides of the fence, I can reaffirm to you with 100% certainty that the system sucks and we really need to do something about it. We've commis commiserated about this before. Well, this creates all sorts of problems because not only um, are you showing problems within the company, but you're showing prior communications about those problems. So that leads to a whole bunch of questions about, well, you commiserated about it before, you reported it before, what did you do about it, who knew about it. This is the kind of email that's, that, that creates a lot of problems for a company. This is one where you pick up the phone or walk down the hall. Um, edit and proofread everything you do. Uh, that's just fundamental. We should all do that, uh, and all of our employees should do that. Um, check and recheck your addresses. Make sure it goes where it's supposed to go. The autofill, you know, reply to all, all of that stuff. We've done it. We've all done it. Employees need to be reminded about it before you send it. Check your, uh, check your addresses. Before you sign something, know what you're signing. Uh, you, it's not final till you sign it. When you, when you sign it, you're saying you've read it, you've approved it, it's accurate, it's not misleading. Don't be a rubber stamp person, and a lot of people do that. The excuse that, well, I've gotten from this person before, it's a reliable employee, I've never had a bad one, I just do this as a matter of course. None of those get you out of trouble once you sign something. You've adopted it and you own it. If you do get something that's in error, try and correct it. Follow these rules and, you know, I've received your email. I disagree with you. Um, I see your comments. I disagree with you. Um, you know, you're not, you don't have all the facts. Um, that may be your opinion. I disagree with you. So at least there's some paper trail where uh, it doesn't become the position of the company. Um, and delete doesn't mean gone. That's the rule. Everybody's got to know that. You delete it. It's sitting somewhere. So I'm going to leave you with one final example of an email that left me feeling like this. Make sure legal doesn't get this email. They're going to shut this stuff down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>